Okay, so the page we are looking at for the review practice today uh, for the speed test component, let me go to the page. We are looking at the red segment today, going to one of the problems that is on page 106. So let's look a look at this page. There are three questions on this page. Let's work on six, seven, and eight. Let's see whether we can do it within uh, two minutes for each of the questions, starting with six. I think six and seven can be together in two minutes. One minute for each question. If you are ready, I'm going to start. Have you found the page already? I'm going to give this page 106. The first, uh, we are getting ready for our review test for Thursday. That includes ratio, rate, and decimals. Yeah, correct. So yesterday we revised on decimal. Today we will work on the rate. Two minutes for question six and seven, page 106. Are you ready? Okay, I'm going to start now. Uh, make sure you have your work, clear working set and you need to be. $36. So you did one hour, so 36 divided by 6. Yeah, so the answer will be he is paid $6 per hour. Okay? 6 hours per dollar is different, huh? Uh, six, $6 per hour. He is paid $6 per hour. He is not paid $6, huh? He's paid $36. Look at the question again. Jeremy is paid thirty-six dollars for six hours. He is paid six dollars per hour. The unit is very important. Okay, you cannot write. You cannot write. He is paid six dollars. That is not accurate. Okay, he is paid six dollars per every hour, one hour. He's paid actually for that day thirty-six dollars because he worked a total of six hours. So you cannot say he's paid six dollars per stock. He's not paid six dollars per stock. He's paid six dollars per hour. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. So you have to be very, very clear. You make sure you get your full marks. You write six dollars per hour. But if it's even easier, if you can write it out in the word statement. Jeremy is paid six dollars per hour. Then confirm you are correct. Okay. Then the next one. So 
So eight minutes is one thousand two hundred and hold on. So one minute will be one thousand two hundred divided by eight. You should do your working. Okay, so <clears throat> one hundred and fifty cans in one minute. So in this question, it says the question asks how many cans of food can it produce in one minute. So the question says very clearly in one minute. So if your answer you write hundred and fifty cans full stop, it is acceptable. Okay, sorry. Yeah, it is acceptable because the question asks for how many cans. So you write 150 cans in one minute or 150 cans per minute. Or you don't have to write that, you can just write 150 cans. But for this question, question six, it's important to be very clear. He is not paid $36, he is not paid $6, he's He's paid thirty-six dollars for six hours and six dollars per hour. So your units need to be very careful. Okay, so this one's here. Some of us are already finished. So I think just one minute is fine for this question. <laughs> Yes, correct. I can just go divide by four and I get two cans. And then here divide by four. That's why some of us are able to go faster than others because you are able to go. You have a you are good with your timetable, so you are able to you call simplify or expand, or you can call step up or step down, like ratio, like equivalent ratio, like equivalent fraction, because your time table is quite good. You are able to get it easily. Yes. Yes, definitely. Is, is it okay to find one cat first? Then I find two cats definitely okay. So that's why I was asking Skylar. So if time is not yet up, but you have already finished a eight, how sure are you that you're confirmed correct? You I didn't see you working through checking steps. So you are thinking like most likely I'll get correct and you think that you are you are gonna be right. But what happens is that if you assume that you're going to be right, you don't check it, then when you make a mistake, you're going to get frustrated. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think again. Is it always that you're getting it right? Sometimes. Yeah, so you should check. Have you checked? So just now, Crystal Bell said, then is it okay by divide by eight tenths? Divide by eight, then I'm five times two. Yes, it's two steps. It's a different method. I can use that to check my answer. It works as well. All right, the next question, we're going to do just one question for uh, step. step rate. Because this is also part of grade. So you 
know that this is not a constant rate question, it's a step rate. So the rate changes based on the condition that's given. Very important, I think you need to remember these terms for the first and after that for every additional. So a criteria changes is not a constant rate. If you are ready, I think two minutes for this question is fine as well. Let's go. This is the next page. Hello, we are on the next page. On the step rate question. So this 107, we're just doing question 9. The first kilometer, then after that, for every and the nerve. So the $2.60 only applies for the first kilometer. is two point uh, two dollar and sixty cent. It applies only to the first kilometer. After that, it's a different charge. It's fifty cent. So here's fifty cent. Here's another fifty cent. Here's another fifty cent for every additional next kilometer. Then reach the next, the last part from seven to seven and a half. Is it fifty cent or thirty five cent? Huh? How many of you say fifty cent? How many of you say twenty five cent? The answer is fifty cents. No. It's already it's already said there for every additional. So, cut the off. You guys, if you didn't say cut the off, let me check the answers to be better. If it's cut the off, then you'll be very clear. It's 15 cents. Now, this question is not very clear. Let me check. Give me a moment to be very sure. Okay. In the exam time, I don't think this question will be ambiguous. Right now, I feel a bit confused because it doesn't seem very clear. So let me just make sure, be very sure what I'm saying by checking the answer for the, for the review test. Yeah, it's not a full kilometer, and also it did not state 
it did not say whether it's a Okay, let me show it to you. So according to here, it is part thereof. So according to here, it's part thereof. Well, I'll say, I'll blame the question on for not being clear enough. Uh, yes, it's a bit weird because it didn't mention for every additional kilometer or part thereof. Uh, usually it will be part thereof. Okay, but this is a math section in the textbook and workbook. Not very realistic, I would say, because nowadays in the real world, the ERP and the gantry system, the digital gantry system, is able to calculate all the way up to per minute. Yeah, and per minute as possible. But uh, in this case, you look at this one here, the answer says, for the first kilometer is $2.60. So the remaining six and six and a half kilometer will be considered as seven parts, including the last half kilometer. So you are not expected to take half of that 50 cents. So it's seven units of 50 cents, that gives you $3.50. And you add up with the first kilometer, $2.50, you get $6.10 for the journey of seven and a half kilometer. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. This question can be clearer if it states for every additional kilometer of Adele. Okay? But for your test on Thursday, it will be quite clear. Sorry? Well, we work one at each time. Okay, so if you are done with this, I'm going to ask uh, the answer. You want to see the answer? If you are done with this question, we will move on back to average, okay? 20 minutes for uh, revision, 20 minutes for uh, average, yes. Because there are seven parts to it. And so you see, okay, I'll go back to show you my notes. So you see, you go back to how I drew it just now, you can see how many parts are there. So I can count here, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So based on this, there are seven units of Yeah. Uh, so for this case, it's considered part there. Okay? Okay. Now, if that's clear, the person, the last person of the table, please collect the worksheet back. Okay? This worksheet, we we will not complete the worksheet at one go. We will complete the worksheet bits, uh, like how we are doing now for re revision. Now, we go back to average, and I want to share with you a bit on other ways to understand average. Okay, so Uh, this morning I'm sharing with you this unit's picture. So yeah. So on the, the first part to tell you this is that so guys, the reason why I show you this is to encourage you to persevere. And sometimes when it gets very tiring and you feel like giving up, don't because you never know. you'll get your returns and just the next move. So persevere on. Sometimes the perseverance might 
mean like a lifetime of work. Sometimes the perseverance may be may mean just for the hour. So it really depends on the task they are doing. Like playing a soccer match. I watched a, a, a hockey match. A two, two different countries, they played a soccer match during the Olympics. For the full 90 minutes, they go at each other at you know, two and four, offense, defense, and they end up with a draw. So persevered for more than uh, almost two hours, but it's a draw. And then in the end, it was the penalty shoot out which was something that happens for a very short time compared to the whole soccer game. If at that point of time, the soccer players let their energies down, or I'm so tired after the soccer game is just off, and I still have to do ex uh, uh, extra time and try the penalty shoot out, then you might generally just lose the game if you let yourself go down with that. Now here's another one that I want to share with you. Now look at these two characters here. Look at this person here and what did what he, did he choose to do? Yeah, so he saw this person managing to dig out this beautiful diamond. And he was like, I'm also, I've been like digging, digging harder than him. Wait, 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 let me finish first. Yeah, it's, it is unrealistic. It, it, it's not really, it's not really something, it's a comic, okay? It's not meant to be really real. You don't, you don't go digging down the ground to look for diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. It's a comic. It's a comic. It's a comic. You are, I'm asking you to take a look at the comic and consider why would you what's happening. So if you look at this and see why did this person decide to choose to hey go over there and start digging there? Is it really greedy? He hasn't got a thing yet. It's not like it's not like he dig up, he managed to dig up something and then he wants to dig some more. He has to dig up a thing. So okay, it may be jealousy or what, but look, it may be a situation where he is like, I tried so hard. I dig even further than him. But I have not wish I don't manage to get anything at all. But he he just dig a little bit and then hey, he got something already. And then he decided, okay, maybe that is a that is the one that is the a, a correct place to be digging for. And whatever I've been, dig, been digging on so far, it's not working out. So he decided to give up on what he's working on, pop over to the other side. In hope that he will. But actually, if he had persisted on his own journey, he could have reached his own success. So the point here that I'm trying to tell you, boys and girls is that sometimes you may lose sight of your own journey if you keep being bothered about looking at others. If you continuously, no matter what others may do, maybe your parents, yourself, or your friends, somebody else is always putting you against another person. It's just that like you look at the Olympic Games or the runners in the Olympics. You know, I always tell my students when they are running, right? you have to push when you're running your foot, but you're not on foot. Run on your own path or you sweep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. Yeah, we're going to teach you to win your foot last time. Sweep, sweep, sweep. And then the, the, the person gets fast. The person beside me, like, run very fast. Then start running like, busy looking at the person beside me. I sweep. Again, and then what happens? You are very sure. But because you're busy looking at someone else, you start to veer to the wrong direction. That happens a lot. Can you please sit here? 
So, the point is, guys, sometimes all you need to do is to save focus on your own journey. There's no really need to compare with others. A few concerns about people comparing you with others. In, in the end, you have to remind yourself what's the goal that you are setting for yourself. Okay, now, so that's the part of the story. Let's quickly go back to what I wanted to tell you. But there's this part. So we are all familiar with this triangle already, right? This relationship triangle. So today I want to share with you, we also talk about how we think things about. So for example, uh, like uh, the, the story about the, on, on uh, Giselle, Zara, and Zoya, we talk about how we can give each other the, the muffins or uh, the points on the And then now there's a new way that I want to share with you. Okay. Another way to think about uh, average. Okay, the so more than one way to understand average, which is the first way we learn, uh, which talked about, like we discussed how we can give each other, evening out. So like these two people here, people B and C, so even now the two of them, people C just needs to give people B two marks. Like how we gave out the points that day, right? So the average of the two pairs for is 50. So looking like the cupcakes here, just moves one cupcake over, you've got it even. So the average number is two muffins. So here, a more complex case. Four students here. I think, how can I make them equal? I just make one person give another person marks. So A and B are already on the average. So I make C give two marks to B. Like what's happening for the topics here. Do some regrouping or redistribution. Now, so that's the first method I can Okay, I'll show you this again because time is very short. I want to show you the question. So I will do do out the question with you. Which is on page the test paper question, question five. Now before that, I just want to share with you again a quick information because just like the step rate, I think there's a tendency to forget easily uh, some very basic terms. So like this one here, question B, just a quick refresh of mine. Imagine there are four plates, just like what I told, told you about, Zara, Giselle, and Zoya. Then here's got nine, here's got seven, here's got zero, and here's got 14. This count as a, this plate here is counted as one data as well. It's a number. So when you calculate the average, you can still divide by four. Okay, I'm going to jump to this question here on the test question, question five. Okay, so on this question, I'm going to show you a different method to get to the average. So for all of us, we know now, first of all, please write down the scores on top. So you have, uh, Mary has four tests. And it's asking for the average. Uh, how much did she score for each test on average? So I find out the scores for English, it will be. Okay, thank you. English is 78. Mother tongue is 82. Mathematics is 84. And science is. 
18. Okay, with this four marks that's given, let's uh, let me show you the two methods for getting average. The first one we already know, the relationship triangle. Total, average, and number of data. So in this case, there are four tests. So first thing you do is I'm going to split it in two methods, one on the left and one on the right. Okay? So first is find the total English plus maths plus mother tongue plus science. So I'm going to add up the scores. English plus mother tongue plus maths plus science. So I will end up uh, 78 plus 82 plus 84 plus 80. Uh, I'll add this up first. So I have 100 here. And then I'll add this up. That's 164. Then add the full up, you will be. 160, sorry. It will be? Sorry? 324, that's correct. That's how we already know this method. To find the average, you take the total divided by the number of data. So I'm calculating the total. So the average will be divided by 4. Total divided by number of data. There's the four tests. So 324 divided by four until will be 81 marks. So the average is 81 marks. Okay, so this is one method that we already know. Take the total divided by the number of data that the four tests. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in the green and I will share with you what I call share the tail method. Okay. Okay, so let me write here for you, for example, English is 78, mother tongue is 82, maths is 84, and science is 80. Okay, so looking at this, Looking at this, I look for the shortest test and check out their tail. By tails, I mean look at the difference. Well, so right now, looking at this, the shortest score is English. Okay, I'm going to find the difference by using 82. Uh, uh, sorry. For mother tongue, the difference is 82 minus 78 is 4 marks. For max, 84 minus 78 is 6 marks. For science, 80 minus 78 is 2 marks. Look at what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add up all these difference. 12, right? So 4 plus 6 plus 2 equals to 12. And I'm going to take this 12 divided by 4, 4 tests to get 3. Then the average will be 78 plus 3, answer 81. Oops. Do you understand what's happening here? So, on my right, uh, I'm dealing with smaller numbers. 4 plus 6 plus 2 equals 12. 12 divided by 4, 3. 38 plus 3 is 1. Is but how is this possible? Okay? It's 
Let me explain it very quickly because it's almost time, it's almost up. So I will explain it quickly. So we have one method of finding average. The first one was use the total divide the number of data. The second one we talk about is by regrouping. Give each other until we are even the same. Here, what is happening is this. I'm investigating the four subjects and asking how are they different from each other. So kind of like I look at the lowest mark, 78 here, and then I cut. I made a cut here. To see how are they sticking out. So I noticed that everybody is more than English by a certain amount. They are not equal. So I imagine if, imagine if every subject is the same as English, they are all going to be 78. Then I take out all this extra. I take out the extra that is 12 and I redistribute the 12. Can you understand? So this is another way to find average. In some questions, this strategy is particularly important and helpful. Okay, let's see if I can get the animation to go. Okay, which is here. So for this here, another example, similar to the one in the verbal question, the four pupils here. The first method is, I give each other. B gives to B, and B gives to B, and then all of them ends up with the average. Another method, method two, I add them all up together, then I divide. That's what's happening. First, giving each other. Second, divide total by number of data. And just now what I was trying to tell you was what I call share out the difference, uh, even out the tails. So looking at this clearer example is A, B, C, D. I cut all the extra out compared to the shortest one. Okay? And then I share out I made a split, <laughs> make them all equal. Share it out. And then add it to the shortest one, I get the average. So to find the average, there are actually three strategies here, three methods. All of them will give you the same answer. You don't understand method one? Basically, it's like whoever who is more, give to the one who is lesser. But it's, it's just giving each other. Well, however ways you can give each other to make them possible. It can be, it can be B gives to A, no problem with that. But the idea is, let's just see, the reason why A chooses to give to C, because they become A, B, B. Yeah, it's a method of redistribution, that's all. Now, which one is the most direct method? Can you see? Which one is the straight, most straightforward? One, two, or three? Which one is the most straightforward? Method one, method two, method three. How many say one? How many say two? I say three. Yes, I will say method two is the most straightforward. You barely need to think much. You just add everything and then divide. Okay, but one and two are strategies that later on in our further level two work problems you'll realize they will, they will stand up more. Okay, now with that, can I entrust you to finish the whole worksheet? Okay, not very complicated, right? Today is a CCA day, but I feel that 
It's only just left with one or two questions. Yeah. And you could just stick on to the same method. Yeah. Some of us is one, some of us is two because you didn't know yesterday. Okay, we'll stop here.